Hello and welcome to this presentation, Laser Assisted Coating of Euro 7 compliant brake discs. In this talk, I want to show to you how laser technology is helping to meet the requirements of the upcoming Euro 7 regulation regarding brake discs. My name is Axel Frey. I am a project manager at Trumpf. The Euro 7 sets limits to fine dust emissions from baked brake discs, also from tires, for the first time. This raises a need for new manufacturing solutions, and time is very short. Trump has taken the challenge and together with the, with the industry, solutions for the soon starting serial productions have been developed. At first, I want to introduce to you the scope and capabilities of Trump in this context. With more than 18,000 employees, Trump is providing a wide scope of solutions from sheet metal working to semiconductor industry. One of the three large business divisions is laser technology. In this division, laser applications are used as tools to provide the right solutions for different customer tasks. Many of those are serial productions, for example, in the automotive industry. An example you can see on the top picture, the 3D cutting of hot foreign parts, but also very special and specific applications like the engraving of difficult materials, such as ceramics in the lower picture, can be done. Other, other applications are marking, welding or laser coating. In the laser application center in Ditzinger near Stuttgart, the coating of brake discs has become a focus topic. In the meantime, a project team of application experts has formed working on improving the technical product but also the application developments. Laser cladding is done by melting a powder flow with laser power. So, to control the process, two things have to be matched perfectly. At first the laser beam, but also the powder flow. This is why the scope of Trumpf in context of brake disc coating consists of two elements. The laser itself, the beam source, but also the, powder, uh, the, the, the beam guidance, the optical components, the beam shaping. Additionally, Trump has developed a 3D printed powder nozzle, designed specifically for the needs of brake disc coating. These compo components form the, the high-speed LMD, or also called the position line technology package. The task of high-speed LMD is, to put it in one sentence, enabling the serial production of brake discs that, that have a significantly reduced wear, but still meet all the requirements and quality aspects of brake disc manufacturing. In the process, a very thin layer of hard steel material is sprayed on the disc with high speed. For a good economy and functionality for the final discs, the layers have to be very thin, have a stable weld bond, and of course, have an excellent quality. In this video, which was made in the laboratory, you can see the process. For a serial production, the process has to run on automated machines in highest quantities. Also, for a good disc, not only the good coating is one criteria, also, it's influenced by the grinding process and, most importantly, it has to pass all the intense performance tests that are typical for brake discs and, finally, it has to meet the fine dust emission limits. This leads me to the main challenge. <clears throat> At first, there is the complexity to have several different input parameters that are dependent to each other, while the result has to meet all the quality criteria. A big impact, for example, has the coating material, so the powder that is put into the process. There are different wear-resistant materials in the field, one layer, also two layer systems, with different stainless steels and carbide combinations. This means that the process and the equipment have to provide optimal conditions also for new and specialized powders. Some of the quality criteria are shown in this picture. So the surface of the coated disc has to be even and must not have any defects. The dilution of the carbides have an impact on the performance on the disc, so they have to be controlled and uh, to, to be influenced in some way. 
Then the overall layer, of course, must be free of defects like cracks or delaminations and have a strong constant weld bond. And last but not least, the complete break disc can show deformations due to the coating, which needs to be avoided or reduced to a minimum. Of course, there are even more criteria you can look at. So the whole, pr the whole process qualification of the, of the disc, of course, has to be met. To achieve good break discs, our main goal is to, write, to provide a product which enables a precise process control for high quality products. One of the tools to reach this goal are two beam shaping technologies, which are called adjustable top head ring and bifocal technology, which I want to introduce to you in the following slides. Starting over with the, with the adjustable top head ring. The, the principle shows, um, is shown in this picture. The top head ring splits the energy in the beam into two parts, one center core with a surrounding ring. You can then adjust the energy distribution starting from an even top head on the upper left side picture, ending with a complete donut profile on the right picture. Between those two extremes, you can uh, level the energy distribution in the energy profile of the beam. This is done by a flexible beam switch in the laser and a two-in-one fiber that's connected to the laser. This beam profile has several effects on the co coating process that can be summarized in two points. First, the impact on the thermal profile. On the lower pictures, you can see a transient simulation being done um, of the process right on the disk surface. The red areas you can see form the process area. So there, the temperature is high and the coated material is applied to the surface of the disk. According to the profile of the beam, now the temperature distribution can be modulated. As you have a quite big laser spot, usually for these high-speed um, high processes, creating this area, there are some regions in the center of the spot that catch a lot of energy. The regions left and right of the feed direction catch less energy. Changing the beam profile leads to more energy, a more even energy distribution, as you can see on the middle picture. This means you have a more homogeneous weld bond. Another effect of the thermal modulation can be seen in the phase boundary. This, that's a small, thin black line you can see in the pictures. The phase boundary indicates the solidification behavior and also the melting behavior of the metal before and after coating. In general, the heating and cooling of the material before and after the process cause stress. The way of solidification after the process has an impact on this effect. The more even the solidification happens, the less stress is caused by the temperature impact. As a result, optimizing this line reduces the risk of cracks due to the stress in the coated layers. The second impact happens during the melting of the powder, so it has an impact on the metallurgy. The metallurgy is a combined interference between the particles flying through the laser beam and the energy distribution of the beam profile. Together they form the process volume, as you can see in the pictures. The, red, uh, or the, the real, yellow area is the beam. The more intense the yellow is, the more intense the um, laser energy gets. The paths of the particles are indicated by the bluish lines there. I have now three different particles shown here. Um, I just name them A, B, C. Particle number A takes a lot of time flying through the whole uh, area of the process volume, while particle number C only scratches uh, a small part of the beam. This can hardly be avoided as we want to cover the whole laser beam with particles. What you can do is optimizing the thermal boundaries in the beam for the particles on the edge and also the particles with a whole fly-through. The worst condition can be found in a Gaussian profile on the left-hand side. Mm. Little energy in the outer area and a lot of energy in the middle. This means that a lot of laser power has to be used to melt also particle number C so that it gets enough energy to be melted. Therefore, the energy distortion on the clad material and on the base, di base uh, break disk is high because you need a lot of energy in the whole beam. 
With an even energy distribution in the middle picture, the situation is way better. The energy impacts between particles A, B, C are close to linear. Lowering the energy now in the center of the adjustable top hat ring creates something like an inverted Gaussian profile. A lot of energy is in the outer part, in the outer ring, and only little energy is in the center. Now particle C, with a little fly time, catches the energy in the area with high energy. Particle A catches less energy in proportion as it catches less energy in the center area. Therefore, the total energy, in contrast to the Gaussian profile, needed for melting all the particles, starting from particle C, is lower and the total temperature distortion to the powder and the disk is reduced. As an effect, the powder catching efficiency can be increased, round about 96%, and the risk for cracks is again induced by thermal stress is reduced. So, this was the adjustable top hat ring. Coming to the second beam forming technology, called bifocal technology. The principle is easily explained. The beam is split into two spots. One main spot, which is used to melt the powder. Then there's a secondary pre-running spot, which is not affected by the powder at all. In the thermal profile, again a transient simulation on the top pictures, you can see the combination of the first and the secondary spot. It leads to a preheating just in front of the actual coating process. In general, a certain energy is needed to create a weld bond. By preheating the disk surface, the weld bond between a coating layer and the substrate is increased. This again leads to a reduced effect by delamination. The main innovation is to be found in the powder nozzle. By the AM printed nozzle, a powder caustic similar to conventional LMD is created. Additionally, a gap is created for the pre-running spot that detaches the secondary spot from the main process. This means that the weld bond can not only be improved, it also has no need for a higher energy in the powder in the main process. So the pre-running spot is like an optimization parameter independently from the metallurgy of the powder melting process. To summarize the impacts of the two V-forming technologies, an adjustable top hat ring is used to optimize the metallurgy and the thermal profile in the coating process. Additionally, the beam is split by the bifocal technology, creating an independent optimization parameter. In sum, this allows three benefits. One, a precise and independent process control. Second, an additional degree of freedom to optimize the process in the laboratory for example, for new break disk conditions or new powders. Third, it allows a higher process robustness as it reduces the risk of defects, creating a larger process window. So pushing away the boundaries of defects and having a wide gap, a wide field of operation to allow a, a stable and robust production. Looking ahead, the next steps in our development is testing new material setups, of course, improving our nozzle using new ideas and the freedom of design of 3D printed nozzle and 3D printing technology, and an approach to directly impact the disk warping and disk deformation with bifocal technology. So as you can see, there are a lot of things to discover. The, the technology is ready for production. If you're interested in further information, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you for your interest and hopefully see you soon.